Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I just want to take a quick look at the uh, Riot Vanguard update for League of Legends, because I've seen some posts online about this. Now, I'll make another video about whether you should uh, install this and whether it's uh, got a privacy concern, but the TLDR of it is, given that I'm making this video and this is not a VM, I, I, I do think it is okay, and I think there are some benefits to having a kernel level anti cheat. So I'm just going to try and run the update. Uh, tips for how people uh, who are getting errors, because if you go on the r slash League of Legends, you can see a lot of people are having trouble with this. So we'll click update, and you won't see that on the video because that was a UAC prompt. But basically, we just had to give administrator permissions, and of course, you will have to reboot uh, once uh, Vanguard actually installs. Okay, and after reboot, it, it worked fine. It did block uh, one thing, which was a driver I'd installed for a software overclocking utility, but that is fine. That is the only thing it may do, is it may block what it considers to be insecure drivers. Those are drivers which it finds uh, might be exploitable. Uh, it's actually, it's generally beneficial for security, but if you do have a, a driver being blocked, that's what it is. You can go to, you can go and find the file and see, and that's what it explains here. Now everything worked fine. Now I'm going to show you my uh, platform security so that you can see what you need to have in order for that to work. And I've already tested it and the game works fine. So you can have this disabled, which is good because this has a pretty big performance hit and isn't always that useful. You need to have a TPM if you're on Windows 11 or if you have any virtualization features enabled. I have WSL2 enabled, so that's good. And uh, this just says the same thing. You also, you do not need to have Secure Boot enabled, but you do need to be using a modern UEFI. Now, I'm just going to go over to the Reddit and see some of the complaints. So, uh, this person is just not able to get in. Uh, this person uh, is having a couple of issues. So, he's not able to get in because he doesn't have features. I'm going to guess it's probably, it's like 99% probably he installed Windows 11 uh, and bypassed the TPM requirement, and Vanguard does not like that, so you have to enable it. Now, if you have a consumer CPU made within the last, uh, let's say after 2018, you absolutely have a firmware TPM. It's just a matter of going into your BIOS and enabling it. It's simple to do, and every motherboard manufacturer has included... A guide on how you can do that. So that's straightforward. Uh, if you have a server platform, you will need to buy a physical TPM. Now you can do that, it's easy, but there is one thing you got to watch out for if you're buying a physical TPM, which is you need to make sure for whatever motherboard you have that you're buying a TPM that physically fits. Uh, now all of these I, I would say are pretty irrelevant. These are network and stuff, that's not affected. Uh, there's this one, this one, there, there's no plausible possibility for a false positive. So if you're getting this, either you've already been banned for cheating and are trying to do it again, or uh, you, you bought some hardware that's tagged. Those are the only two possibilities. Uh, TPM, not enabled. Uh, already explained that one. Exploit protection. This one is strange, but basically you can go into your stealth menu, you can type exploit protection, you can find the settings for this. Now, the, this one is always on by default. The only way this is disabled is if you, or maybe you installed a virus that did it. You do not want to turn any of these off. Uh, the reason this is required is because a cheat might be able to utilize this to get in where it otherwise wouldn't be able to. These are, uh, just make sure everything is set to the default setting. Uh, you can turn some of these on if you want to. I, I would just recommend never changing any of these. I, if you're Following a guide that says you should change these uh, settings, I, I would suggest not listening to that person because they probably don't know what they're talking about. And then this is kind of the interesting one. If you have virtualization-based security, or WSL, enabled, and you have no TPM, that's not allowed even on Windows 10. Uh, the reason for this is because you could theoretically... Uh, because Hyper-V always puts your system in a VM, and it is impossible to use any sort of VM detection under such an environment. It is possible that you are using nested virtualization to hide a virtual machine, which is not allowed. That's why that's there. I guess if you have a TPM, they 
do, it's less identifiable. So that should be uh, everything. Uh, hopefully this is helpful, and please uh, stay tuned if you want to see uh, more ab about this and about privilege levels in general. I have another video coming up that is sort of the opposite. I'm going to look at what how much damage you can do with malware that is not run as administrator to sort of show that a lot of the data collection things people are worried about are not really tied to privilege level. That's all for now. Bye.